In 1936, an unidentified flying object crashed in Germany's Black Forest. Wingless, disc-like and stronger than any man-made competition, it confounded all scientific analysis. Elite physicists from the SS technical branch were tasked with recreating the mystery aircraft. In 1939, the Halnabu disc was born. The Thule Society was rumoured to have a secret base in the Antarctic, and this is where the Haunabu disc was developed. Surprisingly, this notion isn't as far-fetched as it sounds. It was rumoured that these capabilities were guided by higher knowledge supplied by ancient aliens. Contemporary media reports suggested that the aliens were working with the Nazis at the base, building liquid propellant rockets, anti-gravity discs and stealth aircraft. With supersonic capabilities, the Haunabu was the world's first flying saucer. Jan van Helsing writes that scientists used psychic information from the Thule Society to create an aircraft that could travel at speeds of up to 12,000 kilometers an hour. During the Second World War, Air Force pilots spotted unidentified flying objects on numerous occasions. Reports described them as spinning balls of fire that followed fighter jets but never attacked. British Royal Air Force veteran Andrew Amrose wrote that when tracked, these aircraft would radically change speed or disappear, making them impossible to follow. Allied pilots called them Foo Fighters. In that piece of carbon fiber, I placed six uh, little neodymium uh, N, N53 strength, which is essentially the strongest uh, magnets, and they're each placed with uh, opposing poles. So you have north, south, north, south, north, south. Uh, what happens is when this spins uh, right above the uh, plate, it actually will levitate. It'll actually levitate about this far. A lot of people are doing nothing more than getting huge, huge quantities of mass and see if they can get a, a gravity wave to cause things to move. Mm -hmm. Well, that isn't what, what we're talking about at all. Mm -hmm. So I uh, wondered if gravity could be uh, related to its cousin magnetism. Mm -hmm. And so I, uh, I found that when I take two magnets together, I have some neodymiums around here that I'm actually afraid of. They, They're they so can, strong. They can, they can danger you. Mm. But anyhow, you take a magnet, you go to put them together and go, and they go clunk, right? Mm. But you take one of them, move it around, and all of a sudden it doesn't want to yeah, go right. together. They're repulsive. So I got, uh, I had, I ordered one at five thousand dollars a piece, wow. with 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 a quarter inch hole through between both of them, and I put a brass bolt and I tighten them down, forcing them together. Mm -hmm. And then I put them together in a thing that looks kind of like a rock. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I got another one that didn't have magnets in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, Galileo, in in all his endeavors, he went up to the Leaning Tower of Pisa. And dropped the... And he dropped a big rock and a small rock. Mm -hmm. And his buddy down at the bottom kept telling him that the large rock, rock and the small rock arrived at the same time. Well, I went up to in, in the Lockheed Building 501. Mm -hmm. by the side of escalators and, and elevators. Oh, wow. And I got, I got, uh, I got, I got uh, nine guys that were not educated and didn't have pre, <laughs> didn't have uh, pre opinions on anything. Mm -hmm. And I dropped my two rocks. Mm -hmm. And, and I said, fall. what I would like you to do is, I told them what I'd like you to do is I would like you to take whichever one arrives first get it in your hand, and when I come down the elevator, hand it to me. Mm -hmm. Now, they looked identical, except for... So, uh, and nobody knew what was inside? Not, it? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. All the nine times that I tested it, it's as though the one with the opposing magnet field extending out mm -hmm. three feet on each side, I actually measured how, how far, big the field is. How big the field was. And on each side of, a rock, the, of one rock, I had a total of six feet. At any rate, the other the other rock away first.
Which one arrived first? The, the, one, the one that had no magnetic field in it. So you were able to cancel out gravity to a certain degree. You How were you able like to that? cancel, Precisely. reduce the mass gravity effect. Precisely. By, okay. op by opposing fields. Isn't that nice? You, you bet. And got nine signatures and wit. I always skip, you know. You I, did that at Lockheed? What well, year was this? Oh, uh, at least eight years ago. This is um, the actual document of Boyd's where he proved that by altering the the field in a falling body, the magnetic field, it reduced its mass gravity equivalent and canceled out the uh, effects of gravity to a certain percentage. And he did a 500, a building 500 drop test conducted from a height of 59 feet. The location is in White Settlement, Texas, and the time was 12.20 p.m., and this was in 1995, December 12th. Nobody yeah. knows this. I know it. So this gravity, is. mass gravity is not, um, well, that, it, you can alter it. In well, other gravity, words. gravity within itself has to have, gravity goes through anything that is solid and anything like iron or anything yeah. else. But, I, but it has to have a magnetic component, mm -hmm. which may be canceling out within itself. Mm. But as soon as it got around my rock, it all of a sudden recognized the present. How would you define gravity? Could you describe in layman's terms its basic principles for us? Gravity is something difficult to explain because it's something that we essentially don't understand. It's just something that we can observe. Not much is really known about gravity. Uh, there are many theories about it, but they are just mainly theories. There's theories of gravitons which allege that there, these are these subatomic particles that, that act like an attractive force like gravity that exchange between two pieces of matter. There is also a theory that gravity is a, a form of wave, an electromagnetic wave. Basically, gravity is a force. It's uh, it, well, it's the inherent property of matter to have gravity, a mutual attraction for each other. Modern science, current science right now, identifies one gravity. It's one force in nature. Uh, Apparently, through research at S4 or information gained from one of the crafts they were researching there, uh, it, it appears that there are two different forms of gravity. One form works on an atomic scale on subatomic particles, holding pieces of matter, holding atoms themselves together. Uh, another works on a larger scale, the scale we're most, most familiar with, uh, holding planets in orbit holding ourselves to the ground, things of that sort. Because it produces a gravitational field, it, I, I wouldn't say the craft is invisible during the day. However, if you're under the craft, because of the way the gravity is being used, gravity bends time and space and it, it bends light. If you are looking underneath the craft or from certain vantage points, you will actually see what's above the craft. It's, a, it's really a trick of the way light bends under the influence of gravity. For instance, we can see stars that are behind the sun, that are blocked from our view by the sun. The reason we can see them is because the sun is a tremendous gravitational field and it's bending the light around it where we can see the star. Space, time, and gravity are all essentially interrelated. They all act on one another. Gravity bends space Gravity also distorts time. When you vary one, you essentially vary the other two. Uh, if you, as an example, if you have a massive body, say a planet or, or something that's making a lot of gravity, producing a lot of gravitational waves, if you will, um, it distorts space. It bends space to it. It also slows down time. These things aren't theories.